Over the years working in the electrical industry in the UK, I've seen lots of occasions where we've taken out electric heating to install gas central heating. But now, with the push towards net zero and carbon reductions, it looks like we might be moving away from gas heating and more towards electrification of heating. Now, what form that will take will depend on how the technology changes over the coming years, so we'll have to see what happens. But it looks like it could be ground source heating, air source heating, it could be traditional electric heaters, it could be storage heaters. But either way, it's going to be an increase in the maximum demand of our electrical installations. Now I spoke previously on what the effect might be on the demand for our electricity supplies. But what I thought I would do in this video is I've taken an example of maximum demand that I used in my previous video and I'm going to add some electric heating to that and see what it does to the calculation. Now if you haven't seen my previous videos on maximum demand, I'll add a link at the end of this video. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen with you and I'm going to show you the example of maximum demand that I've recorded in my previous video and I'm going to add some heating loads to the calculation and see what that does to the maximum demand. So I'm going to make a little bit of space uh, here by dragging these down. So let's see what happens if we add some heating. So if I add, let's say, four heater circuits like that, if I say we've got two three kilowatt heaters, we'll have a two kilowatt and a one kilowatt. And if I, if I click on the corner there and drag that down, that will apply that calculation to, to these cells as well. And so what that's done is that's basically divided 3000 by 230 to give me 13 amps. So I'm going to use the same diversity factor and then I'm going to drag this down as well. And so as before, what that's done is that's multiplied the current in amps by the diversity factor of 0.4 for 40%. So now all I've got to do is I've got to adjust my totals because as you can see, that doesn't capture all of those. So if I just change that, like so, and like so. So by adding those four electric heaters, the maximum total demand before diversity is applied, 192 amps, which is a hell of a lot. But the maximum demand after diversity is 101 amps. And that being an one amp over is not anything that I would worry about. Um, and as you can see there, that becomes 23 kVA. Now, if you were doing this for a new installation and you wanted to apply for a new electricity connection, what you would also need to do is let the electricity supplier, the DNO, you would need to let them know what the heating load is in watts. And so this is why I find it so useful to total up the wattage as well. So what we can see if we do that is that's uh, 9,000 watts for the heaters, but I would also allow in here as well for the shower and the immersion heater which is 12,200 watts. So if I just take these out temporarily, um, I can just total up the wattage like so. So we've got 21.2 kilowatts in heating overall. Just undo what I did there and put the uh, downstairs lighting back in. So as we can see, that works and that, that's 101 amps. But what would happen if we added an electric vehicle socket? Now this is where it starts to get interesting. So if I put EV socket. Now obviously we've got 3 kilowatt or 7 kilowatt is the most realistic options but even with a 3 kilowatt let's look what happens. Now this method of calculating diversity doesn't really work when it comes to EVs because we can't allow any diversity for EVs. So what I would probably do here is I'll change that to 100% and I would allow the full load there. So that takes us to 114 amps. What if we do seven kilowatts? 131 amps. But as I say, I don't think I would use this method of calculating diversity if I, was, if I had an EV in there. I think I would probably use the alternate method um, in the uh, on-site guide. So let's see what happens when we change this to the other method of calculating maximum demand in the on-site guide, which is to use the individual diversity factors for each type of circuit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna change each of these. Now the shower, we're going to keep at 100%. The EV, the electric vehicle socket, I'm going to keep at 100%. 
Now, the immersion heater, I'm also going to put at 100%. So that's going to be 13 amps. The kitchen sockets, now if I look in the on-site guide, what I can see, and I think it's row 10, uh, socket outlets, other of those, and then included in nine, 100% of the largest and 40% of the other point of demand. So I'm gonna say for the kitchen sockets, what I'll do is I'll do 100%. Just change that. And the remainder, 40%, was that 40? 40%. So they stay at 40%. Now the lighting, this is easy, so that is 66%. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make this equals multiplied by 0.66 to give us 66%. There we are. And then with the heating, let's see what it says in the on-site guide for heating. So it says 100% of the total demand up to 10 amps plus 50% of any current demand in excess of 10 amps. So what I think we probably do there is we look at the total. So if I highlight those cells there, that gives me 39 amps. So we could say just make that 40. So we're gonna say 10 amps plus 50% of the remainder, so it would be 15. So if I just delete those out of there. So there we are, so I've taken the first 10 amps um, and then 50% of the remainder, so the remainder would be 30, 50% of that is 15, and there we go. And then we have the EV there, so that gives us 151 amps. But what happens if we change that to a seven kilowatt EV charger? 168 amps. So either way that you do the calculation in the on-site guide, we can see that the maximum demand increases massively when we change to electric heating and if we have an electric vehicle. Now we know that electric vehicles are gonna become more available. Um, so we, we can expect that people will get electric vehicles unless of course they live in a place where there is no off-street parking and there's no way for them to charge. Then in that case, then that might not be such a problem. Now, the other alternative to this is we could look and see if we could have um, night storage heaters, economy seven, which is you know what we used to have back in the day. I've, I've had it years ago. And the good thing about that is that the heaters are on at night time and they're not on at the same time as everything else. But of course they would likely be on at the same time as the EV charger. So either way we look at it, the demand is gonna increase. And this is why I mentioned in my previous video that I really think that we might see more three phase connections being offered for domestic properties. Um, just to cope with the maximum demand. But that's just a couple of examples there of how I think the maximum demand might change over the coming years. Now, the guidance of calculating maximum demand could well change over that time as well. So I'll be interested to see if we do get any new guidance that, that changes from the on-site guide. But I think the point that I try to make in all of my videos about maximum demand is that by looking at this at the start of a project helps us to keep on top of it and to see if there's gonna be a problem. Because what you don't want to do is to realize that there's a problem with the maximum demand at the end of the project. Um, and, you know, if you've ever been in a situation where a client makes lots of changes throughout the lifetime of the project and you end up with a lot more electrical loads, it is a big problem. And so I think that by looking at this from the start, uh, putting it on a spreadsheet or you can put it on a bit of paper, you don't have to use your computer at all. Um, so I really think that this is a, a good idea and it's something that I, I always recommend, whichever method you use for calculating maximum demand, I always recommend looking at it at the start of the project rather than waiting to find out if there's a problem later on and especially when it comes to electric heating and electric vehicles. And the other thing to bear in mind is that if you do add any kind of um, electric heating or um, an electric vehicle and you're applying for a new electricity connection, the electricity supplier will want to know the load in watts. So it's really worthwhile looking at the maximum demand at the beginning of the project. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please see the link to my other videos about maximum demand.